Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Engineer class in Battlefield 4, starting off with the PDWs. Now this weapon that I'm using here is the MX-4, which is an interesting little weapon made by Beretta, same guys that make the M9. It actually shoots pistol caliber rounds, which would be 9mm rounds, and although its damage at range isn't very good, in close quarters this is one of the highest damage per second weapons in the entire beta. It shoots at 830 rounds per minute and doing a maximum of 25 damage per shot this means you can down somebody very very quickly in close quarters once you stick a laser sight on there in the ergo grip you can also get some very accurate hip fire uh, which allows you to have a nice agile little weapon for CQC now obviously the big change between BF3 and BF4 engineers is that the BF3 engineers start with carbines now carbines are universal weapons and the BF4 engineers get exclusive access to these cool little PDW which honestly from a real world aspect does make sense because if you consider an engineer to be somebody who uh, would be more commonly located in a vehicle a lot of the PDWs are designed to be carried within vehicles because they're so small they're easier to uh, just maneuver around within a vehicle or just be small enough to carry on your person while you're uh, just walking around not necessarily being on the front lines of combat so uh, say you're a tank driver and somebody's coming up to see for you or somebody uh, is going to get out and assault your tank um, you can always be a gunner who pops out with a little PDW and waste them. In the extreme close quarters, I think the PDWs are actually going to be some of the most effective weapons in the game, and they should prove to be very effective on domination since this map is very close quarter oriented. Unfortunately, due to the beta's uh, weapon limitation here, we really can't see the engineer shine with all of these little gadgets and accessories. We're not getting access to mines, we're not getting access to the huge variety of rocket launchers that they are going to be able to carry here I've got the RPG which is standard uh, performs much like it does in Battlefield 3 and uh, you can also unlock stingers which again perform pretty much identically to the ones found in BF3 although one small change I did notice is that shoulder mounted rockets for um, hitting air vehicles so stingers essentially do travel much faster than they did before so uh, pilots are gonna have less time to try and deploy countermeasures and dodge uh, surface-to-air missiles. Now here you can see I'm using the PP2000 PDW and this gun's got some nice little upgrades since Battlefield 4. In BF4 it started with 20 rounds uh, basic. If you gave it extended round, extended mags it could get 40 rounds in a magazine. This one starts off with 44 rounds in a magazine which is standard to the real-life PDW uh, using the extended mags that it actually comes with. So no longer do we have to equip the obligatory extended magazine on this weapon we now get to play around with extended mag suppressors lasers whatever kind of sight you want and not have to really worry about this I think this gun's gotten a great little upgrade it still shoots at 650 rounds per minute and does a maximum of 25 damage so it's gonna perform very similar to the one from battlefield 3 it's still got great hip fire so I recommend using it with a laser sight and uh, shooting from the hip as much as possible if you're making your rounds count in close quarter combat you should be able to down three to four people with a magazine without too much trouble uh, 44 rounds is a lot of damage potential obviously you could kill more than four people I'm just speaking of realistic game situations uh, three to four people with one mag before needing to reload isn't an unrealistic situation now oddly enough we still have some fairly long reload times on these little PDWs which I find extremely weird especially for like something like the MX4 which uses pistol caliber mag magazines and reloads just like a pistol. Well the pistols in this game have incredibly fast reloads at 1.3 seconds. These uh, PDWs have a 2.6 second reload on the MX4 and a 2.5 second approximately. These stats are coming from Simthic and they're not all um, calculated perfectly yet but it's approximately two and a half seconds for each of these little PDWs which I gotta say is kind of on the long side of things uh, I think they should really shorten those reload times and make the uh, PDWs a little bit more attractive especially since they're an engineer exclusive weapon uh, they should really try and beef them up a bit and give engineer something that's really gonna pack a punch in close quarters now of course the engineer comes with its blowtorch which is an extremely 
good tool for repairing your own vehicles. It does seem a little bit slower in repairing friendly vehicles. It's also slower for destroying enemy vehicles. You'll see here, watch the health ticker tick down. This would have gone much faster in Battlefield 3. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about the update here. I feel like it's going to be a little bit trickier to work with. But then again, in Battlefield 3, the uh, time it took for a repair torch to completely take down a tank was incredibly fast. In fact, if you weren't paying attention to what you were doing, uh, you could be disabled before you even realize you're being attacked. Now here we've got some carbine footage. This is the AK-5C, and I figured if we're going to show carbine gameplay on any class, we may as well show it on the Engineer class, since that was the original class to have it in Battlefield 3. And uh, I gotta say, the carbines perform amazingly. In fact, one of my favorite guns in the game right now is the ACWR. It shoots at 880 rounds per minute with a maximum damage of 25, making it one of the highest damaging weapons in the beta currently. And although it's not the best gun in the game for extreme long distance engagements, for medium to close range, it just destroys people. And it's got a really nice reload speed of two seconds. Uh, the AK-5C also has a very great reload speed of 1.8 seconds. These weapons are just all around very useful. They're good at medium to close quarters. They can even hold their own in long range in a pinch. Uh, and their reload times are great. Their damage is great. Uh, the carbines are just going to be an extremely popular weapon class. Here I've got the uh, ACWR equipped. I've got a laser sight on here, an ergo grip, so I can even hip fire this thing if I need to. And you'll just notice here it's dropping people so freaking fast and I'll be honest once we start playing some of the bigger open vehicle oriented maps and uh, I'm playing as an engineer driving a tank around or a Jeep or whatever I'm probably gonna want to go with carbines on those maps just because the PDWs aren't gonna handle themselves at extreme long range quite as well you're gonna need something with a little bit more versatility now some basic tips for playing the engineer class on the larger conquest game modes is to shoot armor in the rear. You do a ton of damage. You can easily two-shot a tank. In fact, I was in a tank that had like 66% health and we got taken out in one shot from an RPG in the rear. So it does massive damage. If you go for that uh, vulnerable, part, vulnerable area of the tank, also take advantage of the uh, recon classes PLDs. I've seen a lot of squads organizing now using PLDs from recons and engineers with RPGs that lock on to that. I know there's been some complaints about lock on RPGs on Reddit and other Battlefield forums. I don't think that the lock on RPGs are going to make it into the final release of Battlefield. We'll see. Uh, I do believe they will fix the bug, however, that makes it so that you don't hear the lock on sound once an RPG is fired at you. Overall though, that wraps it up for this engineer guide. I hope you guys found it useful. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.